And I think initially my inclination was to make the song like dark and scary, kind of like how our band usually sounds. And uh, it just wasn't really working. And I thought to myself, why don't we just, let's just embrace our punk and ska roots and, and do what, you know, like Real Big Fish or Goldfinger or Less Than Jake would do. And it, it started to come out awesome. And I said, oh, we got to get, you know, Matt and Johnny to play horns on it. And they were super into the idea. They turned around their parts really quickly. And then I, I, I had wanted Aaron on it, but I didn't even think to, to ask because Real Big Fish has been, you know, taking a break for, for such a long time. And, uh, you know, I wrote an email saying, is it possible maybe ask Aaron if he'd like to sing on it? And they were like, Sure, yeah, well, we can ask him. You know, we can always ask, doesn't hurt to ask. And uh, got a text back a couple hours later saying Aaron was in. And I was sort of just blown away that mm -hmm. he was willing to do that. And, he, you know, he did such a great job. And, and then I was like, how many more questions can I ask? And I was like, do they want to be in the video too? <laughs> and, and, and they came out and they were in the video. And it was like, on Mother's Day, and you know, Aaron's married is like he had to step out of. He he just they were all such cool, nice guys, and it it really is an honor to be on a song with them. Being on a song with Less Than Jake, it's uh, it's like kind of like a childhood dream come true that these bands are are involved with with anything that we do, and it's really cool to me because. When when people think of our band, they don't they don't think of ska, but I've tried to like pepper that influence in as much as possible. Uh, even though we're we're far from you know a ska band, but if you listen, th th there there really is a a punk influence and, and a ska influence in some of the stuff we do. Melodically, mm -hmm. that's that's where I, I I kind of learned the tricks of of how to construct melodies and stuff. So. I, I love the idea of, of of having those bands be involved with us and being associated with us. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know how many of your fans are aware of the story, but Goldfinger was a pretty like formational part of you, your uh, musicality. Like you, you heard Goldfinger in like 1996 here in the bedroom, and it like awoke something in you shall we say and then a few years later you saw goldfinger play live and it basically set it got things in motion for you to start playing music yes absolutely i, I remember the the day it happened i was at camp camp called kenwood in uh in new hampshire and someone was playing that song like i was just sitting on bed we we're all just kind of sharing music and that snare ba -ba -da 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 -da. and i was like what the fuck is this at that whatever that that tone on that like really piccolo high pitched snare like i had never heard anything like that and then the bass line comes in and i was just hooked on it you know i already was a little bit aware of, of punk music more of like the mainstream kind of stuff like i knew blink and green day and stuff but um i think that song was the first like more slightly more underground kind of punk band that I, that I had heard. And uh, it just, it, it grabbed me. And uh, a few years later in 2000, I went to the Worcester Palladium, uh, like right at the beginning of high school, like freshman year, like first week of high school. And I saw Goldfinger and uh, Mest play. Mest also became one of my favorite pop punk bands. And, uh, it was the first time I was ever at the Worcester Palladium, which would also play a part in, in the band's history. Years later, we would that would be the place we'd play our first show. But uh, during Mabel, like the whole audience got on the stage um, and John put his arm around me, John Feldman, he gave me the mic to sing the line, she's the bomb. And I, it just, it was just insane. And we met them after the show and they were really cool. And uh, that night, I went home and I decided I, this is what I want to do. I was already a huge music fan. I already played guitar and was obsessed with bands and stuff. But that was a concert that 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 put it over the edge for me. And I uh, started writing songs that night or that next morning and formed Ice Nine uh, right there, basically.
I and I've you. since since worked with John Feldman on, yeah. on the last album we put out. Um, he co-wrote and produced a couple of songs. And it's just like it's it's crazy for me to have that that full circle moment where you're inspired by someone and then you know come 20 years 15 20 years later you're at their house in their studio like and he's helping you craft your own ideas it, it, it's just absolutely wild yeah the band you started ice nine uh scott punk band yeah that's that was that was me um mm -hmm. that's the kind of band i wanted to to be in and over the years obviously it's it's um evolved into something much different and definitely heavier obviously but never turn my back on the genre still always has been you know one of my favorite kinds of music to listen to continue to go to all those bands shows and um it's just something that's always been a, a, a part of the dna of what of what we do and it's um it's so fun to be able to to still show that influence and and hopefully introduce our fans and and people that aren't really aware or maybe of of what sky is to that kind of music and you know we're not going to convert everyone but uh i've definitely heard from some people in our fan base that they didn't really know what less than jake or real big fish or goldfinger was about and now they they really like them so that makes me happy Did the earlier version of the band have horns so it's pretty funny when we recorded our first song and demo the first song we ever wrote was called she's the same and uh you know we didn't know any horn players at the time so that recording which i, I think you could still find on on youtube it has like casio keyboard horns mm -hmm. in it which is really funny and i, I actually you know listening back it, it doesn't sound real or anything but i remember there was a moment when the horns first came in and Jeremy, the guy started the band with, we turned to each other like, dude, we sound like, we sound like real big fishes is amazing. <laughs> and I, I still remember how cool that sounded to me. Let's go! But when, when it came time to play our first show at the Palladium, it was this battle of the bands. We did, uh, we did get horn players from the Swamp Scott High School band to join us on stage. And I think that might have been the only show that we were able to get them to play, but we definitely had a, a horn section uh, for our first show. So back to, uh, back to your cover of uh, Walking on the Sunshine with Real Big Fish, you were kind of talking about how you kind of went this dark direction initially, and then you kind of pivoted a bit more into working with Real Big Fish and kind of having that sound. But um, what I think is interesting about the song is that it doesn't really sound like a straight up Scott Punk song. It does have that really deep kind of dark guitar sound, but then it has that really bright, uh, real big fish mm -hmm. horn sound. And it, it kind of, at first it kind of sounds like, whoa, these things don't actually go together, but then it has a kind of a cool sound with that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we, uh, we wanted to obviously put tinges of, of what Ice Nine Kills does into the song. But at the end of the day, the reason we took the path of, of having it be more upbeat and cheery is because that, when you do a cover song, I think you, you need to look at what initially made that song great. And there's an energy and there's, a, there's a, a, a fun atmosphere to that song that if you took it in too dark of a direction, you're sort of killing everything that made it great in the first place so that that's why we uh we put it into that direction and mm -hmm. uh i don't know i think we we wanted to try something that that maybe hadn't been done you know pu putting some like <laughs> heavy growling mm -hmm. uh you know layered background vocals but i you know i always remember when real big fish uh uh i can't remember what song is um why did ed scott quit or something I, I, they would do different iterations of the same song. And one version they would do would be death metal. And Aaron would like cannibal corpse scream over it. So I guess it has been done before by Real Big Fish. Sure. Yeah. Now, a few years ago, you did a song that was inspired by American Psycho. Hip, Hip to, be, to scared. be Scared. Yeah. Yeah. 